Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Let's talk about the Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao negotiation. The latest is that Floyd Mayweather apparently wants more than 50%. Uh, he wants Manny to accept less than 50%. Uh, as Floyd has said in an email and uh, apparently on Twitter, um, he believes that Manny Pacquiao would make more money than Pacquiao has ever made in his boxing career in any other fight and so the offer he's making is a reasonable offer. Also uh, keep in mind Floyd is the one who has reserved the MGM grant. So the question is simply is Manny Pacquiao entitled to a 50 percent cut against Floyd Mayweather. Now before I answer that let me just say fight fans need to think about the economics of this. Right? Both fighters, not just Floyd, but both fighters could make more against Saul Alvarez than they could against each other. Saul Alvarez is a proven box office draw. I'm guessing an Alvarez fight would get at least 1.8 million pay-per-view buys and of course if you fight Saul Alvarez you can pay him considerably less than you would have to pay a Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao. So both fighters could fight Saul Alvarez and make more than they could against each other. Understand the record for pay-per-view is 2.4 million pay-per-view buys Floyd Mayweather against Oscar De La Hoya. Even if the Floyd Manny matchup hits the 2.4 or gets slightly higher than that, it's unlikely that either fighter is going to make more fighting the other than they would against Saul Alvarez. Now leaving the economics for a minute, Right? This is a non-economics argument. Does Manny Pacquiao deserve a 50% cut against Floyd Mayweather? Absolutely. Understand that there is a significant part of the boxing public. I would put that number at at least 25%. And I'm being extremely conservative right at least 25 percent of the boxing public believes that Manny Pacquiao is the best fighter of his generation for his weight range and I have to say weight range instead of division because Manny Pacquiao has been a champion in multiple divisions right and so there are many people who believe today that if Manny Pacquiao were to walk down the street, they'd be able to say, there goes the best at 140 or 147. Right now, let me just say this, and I understand there is a sizable group, perhaps more than the Pacquiao group, who believe the same thing about Floyd Mayweather. Well, let me just say, once a fighter reaches that level he never has to take less than 50 percent against any opponent right you wouldn't ask an Ali or a Vitali to take less than 50 percent right let me just point out that status the best fighter of your generation for your weight range is worth millions of dollars in the future. In terms of public appearance treatment, fees, you know, speaking fees, uh, movie cameo roles, uh, just public awareness, the VIP treatment you receive. An argument can be made that Sugar Ray Leonard is still getting paid today for beating Marvin Hagler in the late 1980s right let me also say too an argument can be made that Marvin Hagler is still getting paid today 
for what many consider to be a robbery he suffered at the hands of the judges who judged that Leonard Hagler fight. It works both ways, right? Um, so let me just say this. You know, this is separate and distinct from an argument on market power. This is an argument on professional stature. Once you reach the level of public recognition that a Manny Pacquiao has reached, quite frankly, it is ridiculous to suggest that Manny Pacquiao accept one penny less than 50%. I don't care if you think you're the superior fighter. Let me say this too. People know my view on the fight. I believe Floyd Mayweather wins the fight. But even though I believe Floyd wins the fight, because Floyd, of course, is bigger, faster, has better timing, has better hand speed, has better foot speed than Juan Manuel Marquez, who just gave Manny Pacquiao all he can handle. Right? Even though I believe Floyd Mayweather wins the fight, I find it hard to believe that he or anyone else would expect Manny Pacquiao to even consider an offer of less than 50%. You have to pay a fighter who's widely viewed. You know, when I say widely, I mean he has a sizable group, at least one in four boxing fans, who believe he is the best of his generation in his weight class. You have to pay a fighter a premium for him to risk that status. You know, the truth is, Manny Pacquiao doesn't have to fight anyone to be able to walk down the street, particularly in the Philippines, 20, 30 years from now, and have fans point at him and have a real discussion on whether he's the best of his generation, possibly the best ever, right? The only way you refute that is if you get Manny Pacquiao in the ring and Pacquiao is willing to risk that status for the sake of a one-fight payday. Right? You know, Marvin Hagler, quite frankly, if he never fights Ray Leonard, there would be a group out there that would do the math and would figure out that Hagler beat Duran, Hagler beat Hearns, and that's in addition to, of course, being one of the dominant middleweight champions of all time. And so there is a group who would have crowned Hagler the best fighter of the 1980s. He didn't need the Ray Leonard fight to have that legacy. Manny Pacquiao, quite frankly, doesn't need the Floyd Mayweather fight. He doesn't have to convince all of the public that he is the best of his generation for his weight range. No, he's already convinced enough people where he's guaranteed VIP status, he's guaranteed entry into the conversation on whether he is the best ever in his weight range, right? And so the point is this, if you're going to get a Manny Pacquiao to risk his professional stature as arguably the best of his generation, you're going to have to pay him for that privilege. And I don't see how you can do that if you're keeping more money for yourself. Let's talk about another argument, right? Now, that's a professional stature argument. Let's talk box office. I know historically Floyd has done better at the box office than Manny Pacquiao, but... Pacquiao's last fight against Marquez and Floyd's fight against Victor Ortiz drew roughly the same, right? If you want to ask the question of what are you bringing to the table, Manny Pacquiao can say, well, I've been over a million for several fights. My last fight was 1.4 million, right? Pay-per-view buys. Not only that, 
because of Manny's professional stature, an argument can be made that only he is bringing to the table the opportunity for Floyd to reach a certain level on his legacy, right? In other words, both guys have this. It goes two ways, right? Only Floyd can give Manny that extra polish on his legacy. Only Manny can give Floyd that extra polish on his legacy. Both guys are viewed by different groups as the best of their generation for their weight class, right? The only way to kind of make it definitive is for the two of them to meet. And if they meet, it's not just the box office today, it's the box office in the future. In other words, we know who won the Ali Fraser trilogy. We know, right? And that glow stayed with Ali for years. In fact, it still stays with Ali, right? Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, you have to compensate the other guy for the glow that you would get on your legacy if you win the fight. I think that when all is considered from a box office perspective, since both of these guys are bringing more than a million viewers to the fight, I think Manny Pacquiao certainly deserves 50-50. Let's go one step further too. You have to compensate a guy for fitting into your timetable. If I'm going to jail next week and I need for you to fit into my schedule because I need to fight you this week, I have to pay you to fit into my schedule, right? I believe since Floyd Mayweather is going to jail in June and realistically, if the fight doesn't happen in May, it's not happening this year because when people leave prison, keep in mind, Floyd's a father, you know, Floyd is a philanthropist. When people leave prison, I believe they want to touch base with their kids. They want to spend time with their family. They want to, uh, the bed they want to sleep in is their bed, not a training camp, but their bed, right? You know, they want to look at the blue sky. They want to breathe in the fresh air. They don't want to leave Jim and then suddenly think about making weight, sparring with sparring partners, and rushing into the biggest legacy fight of their careers, right? So I don't believe Floyd fights this year after spending three months behind bars. I just don't see it happening, right? So... Because Floyd got himself into this criminal justice mess. For him to say to Manny Pacquiao, I want you to fit into my schedule and fight me in May. I think he has to pay a premium for that privilege. So let's hope that cooler heads prevail. I doubt the fight gets made. I'll be blunt. Right? In part because I believe both guys net more against Canelo. But if the fight is going to be made, let's hope these guys get by the uh, posturing, get serious, realize that both of them have a claim with the public, rightly or wrongly, of being the best fighter of their generation for their weight class. And let's hope that the deal is clean, it's level, it's 50-50, everyone feels compensated, no one feels rushed, the deal gets done, and we get to see a tremendous fight on May the 5th. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and theboxinggame.blogspot.com where we discuss outside the ring issues. Thanks for watching.